boys, girls, children, people of all ages. The segment you've been waiting for, the shush you want here, the juice when we don't marinate in the beef because you need to flow over, the bunness where you're needing your tongue, it's all here right now. We have Monday morning beef with juice, but I just want to make you know first thing, right? People are uh -huh. so upset that you didn't dance. They say you're not a team player. They wanted to see you dance. What do you have to say about that? You know, I never want you to look bad because uh -huh. you're used to a very inferior grade of dancers in Mr. Mendes <laughs> and Mr. Usher. And <laughs> I just say, make them look light. And I know, you know, I know, I don't want to, I'm not a permanent presence. I don't want to spoil you. Okay. You know? Because so, these are the lies where you are telling Monday morning. I'm hoping that's the only lies. The truth will come in the beat. That is and not completely truthful, Renata. Okay. I, once Whatever I, makes you see good at night in a jewel. Whatever. I, I, rhythm is a dancer. I am rhythm. Okay. You might know some good music. That doesn't mean you can dance the good music. But anyways, <laughs> that's none of my business. I drink my water. You know, you don't know how I do this thing. We mind our business. And a lot of people could not mind their own business because a lot made it happen for this weekend. Yeah. People are that. outraged, the different topics that we have to get through. I think they're very heavy. And so, shall we dive in? Shall we beef? Let's beef. So, first up, the one that I'm sure many, many people just upset. They're like, you know what, I can just dash down everything in my house or so. Musicians specifically, I know like some of them had reached out to me, very upset about the overall situation, asking if we're going to talk about this. I'm like, yes, we will. So. The new trade license bill. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what's happening. Because you know there was something that was sent out, was leaked China, um, um, on Friday. But then also on Saturday, a new um, release was sent out as well. Just kind of trying to clarify stuff when it still never fully clarified things. So can we talk a little bit about the first and then after the clarification? Well, f first of all, again, we need to say that so much of what's happening right now is due to a lack of consultation. Exactly. This is a, a, a chronic problem because the government has a, a, it can't use any social media, it can't use anything mm -hmm. to, to communicate with people. So there's no consultation. But, Joe, just, that's, sorry, I have to inject because in the second press release that was sent out, apparently there was consultation. And that's the truth that out there. Was it real consultation? What happened there? I don't know, but. Continue yeah. on, because that was I'm just saying, saying yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't, uh, you know, I know, I don't get involved with those words. I'm saying that if you talk to ranking artists, were they consulted? No, they weren't. Yeah. So it's inconsequential what, you know, if you say you consult with the Chamber of Commerce or something like that. Yeah. I am saying that this is a blowback you get. Second, I cannot imagine anybody in the cabinet actually read this legislation. I think them are not read. Them are just a course. Like, yeah, 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 this is so good. Yeah, 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 pass it. <laughs> I am saying that at this time, when people, I, I, when people are at their absolute, when performers in particular are rebounding from two of the hardest years in the history of entertainment, to say that we're going to start charging you, I believe, is this 200? 200. 200 per day at first, and then they clarified it was for an event. Yeah. And the 200 isn't set in stone because there are apparently supposed to be some kind of criteria where they decide between the maximum is 200. I'm just, there were whole pilots to me, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy. Right, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. yes, there are a lot of details to it. But entertainers, performers, are just coming off a of famine. Are you in a cabinet that reads? Do people read? Does anybody say, yo, 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 where is the Minister of Culture? He will issue a, a, a Facebook post on the day after saying, hey, this cannot be consulted. You are the Minister of Culture. You need to view this in cabinet and say, we cannot do this right now on entertainers. But Jews, even before so, the famine, people were not making that amount a money for yes, a performance. For, so, to pay 200. So I came in and It's a completely people. rational figure. But I'm saying that's why there's no consultation. So, Abdul, if we can show the, the press release that the government sent out on Saturday, because there's this furious backpedaling because of the immense backlash. And the immense backlash is because people are just waiting to strike out against the government. Yep. That's how they feel. They're that's, upset. They have all upset. right. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, people have no patience. <laughs> right? People, and I'm really interested in that because... Um, we have, we don't really have a functioning opposition, I believe, right? No, so I'm just saying that I feel that, that people, 
just have so much resentment against the government, um, and, and they're so ready to strike. I understand social media is, a, is just a fertile ground for, uh, for any type of venting, but I was amazed at the quickness the, and, the, and, the, and the vitriol which came at the government. Like people are like, no, 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 and that's great. Isn't there a livelihood? Yeah, for real. So I'm saying that, um, that on, the, on the release, it, um, it makes some important clarification, and one of the major clarifications are for peddlers in villages, right? Yeah. It has to be more than 600 square feet. Yes. Right? So, so those who are less than, and 600 square feet is a fair space. Like the man per side I wrote now, I have to I pay. just want to ask, because I was speaking to my aunt about that. How about those people who are working at a house? Okay. You still want to come yeah. from there now? How, yeah. What happens to people that work in their house that definitely more than 800 square feet? Right, right. What happens right. there? Yeah, certainly an issue. Mm hmm. This certainly is not, this the why things really need to right. be ironed out properly? Yes, but, and that's why there needs to be consultation. So I'm saying that um, what, what the government is saying here that it, it, it dates back to 2014 and there's included extensive consultation with private and public. There has, I mean, you say, this is the thing, like, where, I, it's just words, right? It's just words written on the wind. I think meaningful wind. consultation needs to be added in front of these um, consultations because who you consult? Because exactly. the people, like you said, yeah. the main players in there are not consulted. Right. Uh, and certainly the smallest players in there are not consulted. Exactly. And the most vulnerable people. And exactly. I, I really, uh, you know, um, we can't just look at music and artistic expression as as entertainment, yeah, art, mm -hmm. right? For people to express themselves artistically. And it's um, Dina Halsall from Ascentium who noted that, that where social groups, where education, where churches fail is where art comes in, right? I'm not saying they exist only outside of that, and they can exist within those structures, but I'm saying that for those who are, who are frustrated at every turn they have artistic expression and and artists feel like this is a tax on them and the minister yeah. of culture i'm telling you he put up a uh, abdul can we show his post he put up a post on uh, on saturday backpedaling but he is asleep at the wheel yeah niche hardly made payroll on friday because their accountant in frustration quit deleted all the files roll out oh my so they have to reconstruct their payroll there is a crisis at niche niche is in a state of terminal you know in a in the in the mayas we study post-classic terminal yeah niche is in a post-classic terminal stage i can go into that at another time but i'm yeah. saying the minister of culture abdul can we find the post uh, i think you have it on a screenshot but i'm saying that that at the end of the day he sent out a uh, uh, a Facebook post backpedaling saying this is only the first reading there can be consultations and, and apologetic post this is what here it is uh, was introduced in not yet law uh, changes amendment deemed necessary canon will be made well why you and bring something for just infuriate you I'm saying but it's a it's a function of the arrogance of the PUP because they do have a functioning opposition for them to simply say Yo, just roll this out, man. When do we end up? And the halls of protest are what they are now dealing with. They are saying these concerns will be taken into account as we proceed with the bill, etc. But I'm saying that everything is late, right? Because man, not to read them. Read on a paper in a cabinet. You cannot, as minister of culture, mm -hmm. if you are if you are sentient, you cannot have seen this and say, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll pass it through, then the, the, next, the next review, Nothing again, I problem. go back to who would it consult, how would it consult, how does it get to this point? Because anybody in their right mind, like you mentioned, if you had seen this document, know the backlash that would have come with it. Exactly. In just the initial stage. And I get in that you could, I really in the... fix it. I get you could fix it, Jules. I get it. Yeah. But in, before we even release this to people, before we even have people get so upset about this, this could be all avoided. If yeah. we may talk to the people. And informal sectors need informal consultation. You can't tell me about your consultation. Like, you, you can't tell me that, well, we have this. You informal sectors require informal consultation. These are people who work till four in the morning. Yep. 
right? These are people who work till four in the morning and wake up three in the afternoon. Yes. Real talk, that's right? True, that's true, that's true. So I'm saying that, that uh, but it's just that the government, because of the dysfunction in the opposition, total dysfunction, and total ineffectiveness of the opposition, the government is on course and they're like, Psh, just push that up. Well, who and do we what? Own and vote against me? Oh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, good. Vote for hope. You, you tried that last time. I, I don't so, know. <laughs> yeah, so, so the government. But hopefully, uh, you know, in this week, there will be much uh, hand wringing and backpedaling. And I'm so glad that they had the backlash on Facebook. So, because the government need some contact and the opposition isn't giving it that contact in terms of, you know, um, um, that feeling of meaningful resistance. Yeah, and so definitely, I know they said there was supposed to be a well, consultation or they're supposed to see well, how this will get revamped and everything. I'm sure the same artists, same people that they talk about, they need to bring that in at the table and yeah, talk to them. Yeah, but those artists need to attend the committee meetings as well. Yeah. It works both ways. That's true. The government must in consult the informal sectors, I understand, but same way, the informal sector has to get formal. You know, can't just complain on Facebook because we got Facebook revolution society. You know how much revolutions Belize on that on Facebook, I mean, right? The revolution and nobody did cause that to make a whole personal post and how to do an next press release. So I just said there is power in the revolution. Yeah, but you got I, to you have to go there. You got to be present at the committee meeting. Definitely, no. You definitely. have to be out there, right? Um, the this last is for artists for everybody that is involved. If it affects you, please make sure you make a presence known. But also, they need to com uh, communicate to people about having their presence known to as well because some people people you know, people don't get the information they don't know about meetings yeah, they don't yeah. know about what happened absolutely so uh, and, and is, I, I did not see this bill until friday and you know it's again uh i don't it was not circulated yeah and again there is no open government platform because there is no open government there is no open government platform because and there continues to be this is this was true under the udp True under the PUP, they do not believe in open government. They, they believe in press release. They do not believe in press conferences. No, 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 no. You can't ask me no, anything, but this is my business. I'll go ahead and pay you and you there because of me. You know what I'm saying? my business. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Do better, Jews. Do better. Do better. I'm trying. And, I'm trying. And so trying. we got to move on because although this trade lies and very spicy, we'll definitely be having a next conversation later on about it because updates will be happening. So hold people accountable and also... As Jules has mentioned, if you know you have meetings, if you know you have consultations to attend, please consult. Please be a part of these things because your voices need to be heard. So incidents like this can be avoided. But again, a two-way, Jules, a two-way. And so as we're moving on, there was an incident that happened over um, this weekend as well. I said a lot that happened with Councillor Michael Gooding, who's also the, the deputy, deputy, deputy mayor deputy of our mayor fine well, city. Sir, yes, man. Maybe we can use a higher... Post because you know, then of he, course, he worked hard to get it exactly. So, he worked, he, he did, but you know what, that grew everything like you know, things the wrong thing. So, I just to say, um, but let me not be that person. So, tell us a little bit about you know what had happened. There is a shooting incident that took place. I understand that there was his group of friends with a next group of people that came into like a little altercation. Yes. So, but all those details are relevant. You are deputy mayor of this city, you're an elected official, you're a city councillor. You need to chill. Yeah. You cannot get into their BS beefs. Yeah. You cannot be in these beefs. Yeah. You cannot be going around, allegedly, with your gun in your waist. They show people it to and all that stuff there. Yeah, I can't so I'm easy. saying that he's, no matter what he does, you run from the jump. If you are in, if you are a public official, elected with a high office, the deputy mayor of this country, you cannot be in those situations. You have to have people around you who are buffers yeah. against this sort of thing. I understand you're a young man, I, he's 28 years old, and he go, yo, the standard of, of behavior that is expected and required of yeah. you is so much higher than the average citizen. You're not a public figure, you have to you're understand. Not, and, and you're creating, you are part of the chaos in our city, that entire neighborhood that's a residential neighborhood behind there. Yeah. Then they hear gunshot, two in the morning, five, six shot they're hearing. So let's just know that I've said up front that Micah is wrong no matter what he did. Yeah.
because of the standard of behavior expected of him. He's accountable, he's elected yeah. to maintain good order in our city. Statement number two. So the incident is supposedly he's with one set of people and there's beef with another set of people. There are three licensed firearms mm -hmm. in this situation. That is too much firepower on a Friday night, on a payday Friday night. Mm -hmm. That is too much firepower in the hands of people who have been socializing. One presumes when you socialize, you drink, so your judgment is, is impaired. I do not know that they were, but when you it go out Friday seated, night, yeah. I, but then time you go out Friday night, you, you, it's not church. You don't know water to drink. They're not water. They're not water. I think you only when you don't mind your business. Yeah, yeah I'm saying I'm in my business. Yeah, then I'm, so I'm saying that a friction started, and one of the gentlemen, uh, so you know, one of the, one of um, the guy who was later charged, um, he alleged that Micah stepped to him. Yep. Or that he stepped to Micah and that Micah had a gun in a waist. That's the allegation. That's the allegation. Micah gets in his vehicle and is leaving, leaving the scene. And the, the charge person, um, he alleges that someone in the deputy mayor's vehicle, a black Nissan Rogue, someone in that vehicle fired three shots. In response, he fired four shots at the vehicle, shoots out the back of the, the, the deputy mayor's glass yeah. and also the, um, the, the, the rear of the vehicle. A young man in there, who is a shadow counselor, Tay Medina, um, we have his, this young man is a, is a, is a shadow counselor. Yeah. He's injured by one of the gunshots. I am saying, my people, what you did do, what you did do, I understand your, uh, you know, his apologists are claiming, well, he's fleeing the scene of a shooting. He is involved in a shooting. He races to the police station. I assume this young man was taken to the hospital first, but races to the police station and, and um, they are detained. The yeah. deputy mayor of Belize City was detained. Of course, he politics being what he was released the next morning because politics, we can't detain politicians. Are you crazy? You know who that Chester Williams? <laughs> Just... 6, 10, 57, 16, hey, yo, we can't have politicians. Are you best here, not, Jules? You have to be he careful is, with that. He <laughs> is, But not immune to influence, although very, very he, will, he will kick and scream. So I'm saying that because my first question is, was Michael Gooding tested for blood alcohol levels or a urine Remember, sample taken? You can taken? deny that too as well. So yes, was you, yeah. yeah, but I'm saying that's consequential in this entire thing. A, he was the driver, but B, the level of impairment mm -hmm. of, alcoholic, uh, of alcoholic, because you cannot have a licensed firearm and be drinking, yeah. especially in public. So, and I am saying that he was released on Saturday morning, but my point is that if it were a regular person, mm. not a politician, in other vehicle, Three men in the vehicle, shooting, and one they allege the next one fire first, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Discharge firearms discharge in public, which is an offense. You never may have left. I just want to say, you might this morning. This or when that thing might be. You know, you, yeah, exactly. You you yes, may either go in a court this morning or get released this morning. So, yeah, someone and other this week. I am saying there is how that happened. The, the standard PUDP business preferential treatment for mm. politicians. And that is a PUDP constant. Yep. Now, this harkens back to Dean Samuels when he was a UDP city councillor, uh, probably about uh, uh, nine or ten years ago. He also was involved in some nightclub business, um, gun, gunshot fire, and he was also, I believe at the time, the owner of a licensed firearm. The point is that the, you, the, the, the expectation the requirement of you as a public official is so much higher. You can't get ketchup in a damn picnic business. Yep. You cannot. It's not acceptable. So it's going to be very interesting to see what the mayor does now if he suspends Micah. Again, Micah has been suspended before yeah. um, in their first term. But there is, not, there is a, lot of, a, a lot of friction between these two guys that are on TV right there. 
They may be side by side in the picture, but they are not side by side too often in life. The mayor and Councillor Gooding have beef. They do. There's constant friction in that council because of the antagonism between these two. There are factions in that council, but Micah Gooding has backative in the PUP. He's a child of the PUP, and he has people deep in the PUP who support him. So that's why he was able to be elected as deputy mayor despite the mayor wanting Kaya Katus mm -hmm. as his deputy. Micah was able to overcome easily. He crushed um, Kaya in the election because Micah has political backative. Let's see how far that goes right now because the mayor will certainly want to take action against him and he's justified in doing so because his actions did not meet the minimum standard yeah. expected of public officials, but it did meet what we like to call the marking standard. I will say Ooh, no more oh, on that. Man. So let's talk. Keep going, brother. Let's keep going. Let's keep the momentum going, shall we not? Um, let's talk about how the UDP is failing. They failed. Talk, talk to me a little bit about you know that statement. Many people are like, what do you mean? What's happening? Do we still have a UDP? What's happening? Well, I'm saying, once again in the House of Representatives on Friday, three representatives show up, no Patrick Farber. I'm told he's in country, but they say he got COVID. That's just, um, I think it's the Prime Minister who said that in Parliament. My point is, the UDP again on Friday was totally ineffective in the Parliament. Now, I understand a lot of the bills were presented. It, it, it was not a contentious debate day. Because, like, for example, when the uh, trade license bill is presented, that's the first reading. It's not up for, for debate at that time. But what saddened and disappointed me was how ineffective they spoke on the adjournment. The adjournment is when any member can speak, and they can speak on matters of public interest. Yeah. There are so many matters of public interest. Yeah. And all three of them spoke, and they spoke totally ineffectively. I'm saying that it's really unbelievable how crappy they were. Shine spoke hopelessly on public debt. Um, Hugo Pat spoke on a, like a bus, like the bus driver could pick up the picnic. I mean, just a minor thing you could straighten out that phone call. He made a huge deal because some bus drop on picnic a mile away from his school. I'm just saying, it, it, he didn't point to a systemic issue. Tracy Tegra Panton spoke so, uh, so forgettably that I literally cannot remember what she spoke about. And I was fully tuned in. I'm saying that, they are, and then Faber, who is, I mean, at least a, a, a competent presenter in the house, he, he did not show up. Sister B, well, that, I mean, you know, that's, that's a, a permanent state of affairs. So I'm just saying that at this time when an opposition is so needed, they continue to fail to deliver. I was so disappointed in their uh, presentations on the adjournment on Friday. I will section that off now to talk about village council elections yeah. because this was the first weekend, Sunday was the first weekend of village council elections. Um, I, I believe the UDP is saying that it held on to three of the, I, I think the best UDP can hope for in these village council elections, which I will say at the outset, outset should not be politicized. Yeah. They should not be politicized. But they are politicized. Because with our political country? Because no, because we're run by PUDP. They politicize everything. Everything has red and blue. Everything has red and blue, even the gangs, as we like to say. Mm. But my point is that um, in the village council elections, I believe the UDP uh, is claiming that they held on and and if you can hold on in a time like this, Put you're in at a fight. No, a number of slates that the UDP is claiming are actually independent slates. But that are because there's so much antipathy between the caretaker, if that term can still be used, political caretaker, and the persons in the villages. So, um, and that's happening with the villages down south. But I'm saying that while the UDP may have held on or failed to, to lose significant ground, yeah. did not lose significant ground. Look at an area like in Cayo West. They have three villages there. The UDP is not contesting two of them. Why is that? Because I believe Erwin Contreras is just sitting back. 
He's not a Shine supporter. He was a Tracy supporter. And he's just sitting back. He was a representative for UDP in Kaya West for many years. So they have two councils in which they actually did not put up a slate. RNL, which was elected by endorsement, and now Color Creek did not put up a slate. It's, un it's unbelievable, really. But it's symptomatic of the UDP, which is beset constantly by infighting, and they continue to fight. So, you know, it's really a lamentable state of affairs. And one footnote I will mention there, they had their nominations on Sunday, and a member of the press, Moises Martinez, was not allowed in the nomination room. Ridiculous, oh no, stop it. Elections and boundaries, oh no, need to make people understand the media is entitled to have access to everything. Yeah. It was not a voting situation. It was just a nomination, I believe a nomination for... Color Creek, where again the UDP is putting up no slate. But I'm saying that they, I am calling out to the chief elections officer, the media has to have unfettered access. No start this nonsense yeah. that people feel they can handle the media how they wish. We are the only thing that makes a democracy work. I, I, I should say among other features, but we are central in a democracy. Unfettered access is required. And I understand when people are voting, you cannot go in there. That's not even in question. Yeah, but this is just... But if people are being nominated for public office, open the doors and let the man through. I believe that's a biblical term, by the way. Good. So, moving right along, Benkevia councillors increase stipend. Let's talk a little bit about that. Right, so we have information that indicates that, that the, the, uh, the councillors of Benkevia who were receiving 500 a month have increased their stipend to 1,200 a month. Um, so the, the, the town council, again, the town council, they are split. Just like the town council in Belize City, just like the town council in Belmapan, and now we're hearing the town council in Benke has in fighting. Well, they increased their, their stipend by more than 100%, according to reports. Again, uh, this was inform reliable information I received on the weekend. And we still have to, to uh, reach out to that council today. But if this is true, tone deaf, like, oh, no, no, they with it. In a time like this, you all are increasing your stipend by 100 plus percent. Yeah. How tone deaf can you be? But again, this is a function of the PUP. It is smell, they are smelling themselves. They feel they're invulnerable politically, and the UDP is making them feel that way by their dysfunctionality. The UDP needs to get their act together and stop in fighting, but that is another matter. But I'm saying, if this report that I received this weekend is accurate, and I got it from a reliable source, it is outrageous that in a time like this, when there are so many strictures on spending of all types, yeah. and people are taking so much lick, that you and say, it's a small council and 1200 is not a large amount of money. That's still but money though. In, no, in Bank of it's a lot of money. A lot of money. Right? And so I think that that is tone deaf and uh, completely responsible. Oh. Talking about your responsibility, talking about what's happening in this overall country, again, social media campaign to exonerate. Alexis Rosado. You know, I raised the Alexis issue last week and we yeah. broke that story here last week. Uh, which gained a lot of traction, that uh, he continues to be the co-agent, yeah. which the, the government just did. They didn't deny that, though. They, they, well, they never they told didn't about it. They didn't disclose it. They never disclosed it, but after when I asked about it, they're like, yeah, he, he's... But they can't deny what's factual is there in if England. If they meeting, I mean, some, yeah, they add two and two and... No, 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 no. You so? cannot change the unalterable fact that they opened the discourse on this subject with... Uh, misrepresentation or with a lack of full disclosure. Exactly. With a lack of full disclosure and that creates ill will but that's how, that's how governments are. So he continues to be the co-agent. They've admitted but they admitted after we after we, after we publicized it. On this show we, it was, uh, is, is where we broke that news. But my point is that there has been an active Alexis Rosado is a highly respected person in terms of he has a lot of long-held uh, friendships and alliances, and there is an active social media campaign. Uh, people say by phantom accounts, but there's an active social, uh, social media campaign 
to exonerate him in the public eye. Yeah. And I think we have a post from this weekend, Abdul. Um, someone posted, and, 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 and this was just gross. And people are losing their perspective. They compared what they believe is the unjust prosecution of Alexis Rosado to Nora Parham's death oh. by hanging at the gallows. Dear so Lord. she hung at the gallows and he flew to UK first business class. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, so, so the state ordered her to hang at the gallows and the state paid for him to fly to UK business class. There it is. 59 years ago, a grave injustice was done in British Honduras. In Belize, that does not do the same grave injustice to Ambassador Alexis Rosado. My condolences to the family. For real, yo. For real. Like, I, I know that's, that's just social media scuttlebutt. I understand that. Like, I know it's not a policy statement, but I'm saying this is part of an active campaign to exonerate Alexis. And I'm saying, yo, oh, no need for chill because you all are getting... The matter is in court, so they're doing the so much we can let, 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 let that work yes, itself out. Yes, but I'm saying these people are insistent on using social media, and they continue to do so. And we, I know from Channel 7 page, we had to delete stuff because they were putting the name of the victim or pointing to the name of the alleged victim. But you all need to chill because you are, I mean, I cannot imagine your total lack of perspective when you are going to compare Nora Param, who hung at the gallows, do you understand? A mother of eight. Yeah. 36 years old. In their mind, I feel, I don't know, you know what, I don't even know how to explain what they were feeling. How did they make the comparisons? I feel like analogies and comparisons and all these things, people, they feel in an English class. If they say exactly how we're supposed to be doing these comparisons, understand the overall situation, because... In their mind, it's an injustice. So all injustices are the same thing for them. Yeah. And so that's how they're making their comparisons. But definite people, let the evidence talk. It's in the court. Let that unfold. If you have your opinions and so forth, okay, honey, but keep it to yourself. Drink a water, mind your own business. Let these things unfold for themselves because we still, he's still, he's innocent until proven guilty. Absolutely. How he has that under his belt. However, we still need to see the evidence come. We need to have the court decide on every single thing. So just let it play out. Man. But uh, we need to underscore as well that while he continues to act as co-agent, the government has said that he will. You understand that in a Western democracy, and understand we are not that. We are a Central American democracy with our own norms. But in the UK or the United States or the European Union, yeah. someone who is accused of rape and presumed innocent yeah. would not be able to represent the state at the highest level. Because yeah. he continues to represent the state at the highest international level. I'm just saying it is uh, a quirk of our system that he would continue to do that. Um, and it's a government decision and, and they, uh, they have their own reasoning for it. But it certainly would not be able, you, you couldn't fly that in, a, in a the U.S. or the U.K. We are not there. And son, we, we are not in those countries, but... It sees what flies, what favor come, when pull string happen, how people deal with situations compared to other countries. So definitely something to look at and consider. Yeah, I, well, I think that, that, that we just have a high tolerance. Men have a high tolerance for the alleged indiscretions of men. Yeah. Or alleged violations of men. You have to remember uh, it's a country uh, run by men. Um, although, you know, the, the government will say, well, the... The, the judiciary is led by a woman, the head of state is a woman, and the head of parliament is also a woman, being the, the speaker of the house or the, the, the president of the Senate. But at the end of the day, we know the shot callers are men, and until that changes, we'll continue to see a, a lot of irregularities. I want to mention one more thing regarding the house meeting. I see that the, the, the bill to make significant changes in the judiciary, I forget the, the name of the bill, but... Uh, it was supposed to be tabled for first reading on Friday. But I'm just showing you the difference in power, right? Yeah. Then get the sense quick, because they want to significantly change how the judiciary works. They want to change the Supreme Court into a high court. Yeah. And in so doing, uh, you will have one 
um, the, the Chief Justice will then be in charge of the High Court and can move between the Appeals Court and the Supreme Court, and that person will be the head of the judiciary. So you wouldn't have, you'll have a president of the, of the Court of Appeal, but this, this Chief Justice would be above them. And we're bringing in a foreign Chief Justice, uh, uh, a woman um, that the government is, is, um, is trying to bring in from, I believe, the, the, um, one of the Caribbean courts, the Eastern Caribbean court. The government has more or less decided to, to bring in this person. But my point is that the judiciary was not happy with this proposed legislation. It was, table, it was supposed to be tabled in the House on Friday. It was on the order of the day, and they pulled it at the last minute. So when powerful people are involved, then get the sense real quick. Yeah. But when powerless people are involved, entertainers and, and, and people who sell out of their, their home, peddlers who sell out of their home or some small structure, no, 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 no. We have figured, oh, no, oh, no, take this. But I don't like we're not going to fight that much or something. Exactly. So I'm saying that the government knows well yeah. how to respond to power. Definitely. So the, the, the judiciary, I believe, made its, its, its displeasure known with the proposed legislation. I don't know what's the reason, but it was pulled on Friday. It was tabled for first reading. It was supposed, scheduled to be tabled, and they pulled it because they know how power works, because that's power they respect. But yeah. power of entertainers, the who, oh no. Nobody don't respect, oh no. Why not play music? You know Anybody what? could do that. Computer could do that. Cut me. Without a time, I know your, the beef, marinate, <laughs> everything, all the juices that happen and everything. But we do also have Minister Hossein Mai that's going he to. He ain't going to leave. You there? <laughs> He's, He's right here. here. You're saying all. Abe Mai is here in uh -huh. the flesh. Uh huh. The so, man who wants to change beliefs from CARICOM to Central America. Oh. All right. So, without any further ado, We'll have a commercial break. And when we're back, we're going to be talking about the prices and a lot more in store. So stay tuned for that conversation. We'll be right back. If you don't want to fight with me, don't.